Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Varek Rainey, and um, I'm here today uh, because uh, I made a promise to my pastor, Pastor Jimmy Joe from Praise Chapel San Diego, uh, that I would share a few of my poems with you guys from on um, YouTube. So, uh, with that being said, uh, my first poem that I'm going to share with you is um, entitled "The Seed," and um, it correlates to a uh, a letter that I once wrote to my biological father, and um, at the time I didn't know him. And I demanded answers. Um, so without getting too much into it, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start. And I just hope that uh, you would enjoy it. Dear David Smith. <laughs> Sorry, force of habit. Dear Father, over the past few years, I've tried to put words to it. Pen dry, notebook empty with nothing to show for it. All I do is hope for it. But not even President Obama can bring about change for it. So hurt and pain, I bore it. I wore it as if it was a medal of condemnation. For some reason, I keep looking for a compensation and restoration of shattered dreams and a broken heart created by an absent father that played hooky from the very start. My wondering mind has escaped, so my wor words are trying to hunt it down. My words are deadly, but my delivery, you will never hear a sound. I'm heaven bound, but once in a while, I look upon the path of the wide and wild. Anger and hatred starts to linger. Holly sprung, bouncing off the walls like Tigger. Evil thoughts escalate and get bigger. Couldn't whip it into shape, go figure. I'm failing this test of life. So many unanswered questions. I need you to tutor me, please. Provide me with some explanations, putting my mind at ease. This is my first question. Why did you leave? I mean, if you didn't like mom, why did you deceive? Do you know how many Christmas Eves I wish that you would be there, wondering how you looked? Or even if you care? Question number two. Did you ever look for me? I know that I was a handful, but were you ever curious how I turned out? Didn't you want to see? Ever imagine if I had your smile or the shape of your nose, a little hint of your personality, or the same frame when I rose? Or if I liked stories read to me when I dozed? Off into a comatose state, dreaming of a complete family, never wanting to awake. Have you ever attempted to contemplate my fate? Whether I was a lawyer, a surgical doctor, a baller, or a CEO, you know, a shot caller. Or maybe, or maybe, I turned out like every other black son without their fathers doing hard time in a cruel place because their MIA fathers didn't bother. Or maybe they just scatter because it didn't matter. I mean, you were part of the cult. They like planting their seeds whenever they please, whenever they wanted another notch in their belt or to satisfy a need, taking on the name of John Doe or Johnny Appleseed. But wasn't it the apple that was the downfall of Eve, the fall of man, and from the garden they had to leave? But all of this... What did it achieve? Which leads me to question number three. Do you have a family? Do you supply them with everything that I long for? Do you hug them, drowning them in kisses, telling them that you love them every chance you get, rushing to the hospital if they got stitches, granting all their birthday wishes, sending their world into a celebrational state when they heard the warmth of your voice? So here we go. Was this your choice? Were we your secret life? Do your kids even know about me? Do they know that they have another brother in that family tree? For far too long, these things created a whirlwind in my head. Sharp pains that I wasn't able to ignore. What did I do wrong? I promise that I won't do it again. Why don't you love me? Feels so many nights wishing I was dead. Until a vision I was fed. I see my father coming for me. <laughs> but the weird thing was that it wasn't you. He sent his son, my brother, giving his life on a tree, on an earth-shaking hill called Calvary. Man, what shivery. He's such a loving father. He's been there filling out your shoes, teaching me everything that I needed to know. Sad thoughts of you replaced by his good news. No, this is not Hill Street, and I'm no longer singing the blues. I'm releasing these burdens of you, 
like the little blue dog that dropped clues. Through the example of his son, he has taught me how to be a man, to treat everyone, especially elders, with respect, to open the door for a woman. He taught me how to love till it hurts, to forgive the things and the people that hurt me, to not speak ill of others, to live a righteous life, not only for people to see. He taught me to lead through example and not to give examples of leadership. He showed me to that if I make a mistake, to repent and fix it and not to pass the blame, make excuses or a dip. Oh, and don't worry. I don't flip and give him any lip. That dirty rebellious mouth got washed out when my brother told me, here, take a sip. He taught my brother to be a humble servant and he washed my soul clean. I have trust in him and not of this world, Luke 16, 13. So no longer will I call you a bad father, just an absent one. No longer will I hate you. I will love you like he loved his son. So what's done is done. Regardless of your choice, your seed that you've sown, though it was abandoned by the farmer, it was cultivated by the greatest engineer ever known. He watered my spirit with living water. He sheltered me from false doctrines. He disciplined me by rebuking me. He nourished this tree to fruition. He looked upon, you looked upon me as a lowly weed, but he seen the future in your seed. He gave me all that I need so that I won't have to fall victim to pornography or greed. So on his manner, I continued to feed. And when I was wearied, I rested in him because he never left or forsaken me. He was there to support and to whip me, never sparing the rod, never sparing his grace, never sparing his mercy, never considering me a waste. <laughs> Maybe this was all for the best. At least that's what I say. In your absence, I drew closer to him. Maybe if you were there, you would have gotten in the way. Maybe I would have taken your attitude on life, looking for the next fine woman that I could slay. Never living in Hawaii, but always looking for a lay. Choosing the other life, allowing myself to go astray. Never being a fisher of men, but hanging out at the bay. Never meeting the love of my life. Never learning to talk to God and pray. But be that as it may, I've sought refuge in his bosom, hugging me tightly as I cried in anguish. I was told to keep a hold of my eyes so that I wouldn't lose them. But she keeps on passing me by. <laughs> I think it was so that I wouldn't use them. For this seed has become a bountiful, deeply rooted mulberry tree. You may be able to shake me. You may take all of my fruits, but you will never, never uproot me. My father gave a mistake a destiny. He gave a terrible child a purpose. He looked past the emptiness. He gazed kindly at the rebellion. He allowed this wild-eyed man to focus. One of many misfits. But he chose us to carry on and need. But this farmer will remain when I plant my seed. May it surpass God's greatest expectation indeed. As I pray and plead, speaking life into this cycle, my seed will succeed. So I love you, Pops. Yours truly, the seed. Thank you.